So, as most of you know, we go through a book at a time or a large section at a time. We're going to do the Ten Commandments next. But we've been in Ephesians for all summer, part of the spring and all summer. And this is our very last bit of Ephesians. We're going to do something a little bit different. D is going to try and translate simultaneously. She's good at this. I'm not. I've never preached for uh, a translator. So we'll see how it goes. OK, this is the very end of Ephesians. And it's one of those passages that does not get preached about very often because it's mostly Paul saying goodbye. So, but I think there's a, some more than I expected that we can learn from this passage. What am I doing wrong? Okay. So, Pierre preached a great sermon last time on the armor of God. And that passage either ends or the next section begins with, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So with that said, I want to pray for tonight. So Father God, I pray that you would help me to teach and that you would help people to hear the word that you have for them for tonight. In Jesus' name. Um, Pierre did a great job preaching. Um, I often sing a song as part of my sermons. For this sermon, I have a song about the spirit, the armor of the God. Please feel free to join in. This song does not repeat as much as some of mine. I want to be ready for battle today, wearing the armor that helps me to pray, yielded in all that I am to your truth. Lord, give me the belt of truth. What's going wrong? <laughs> Up here, it doesn't, it sounds like, <laughs> give me the belt of truth and strip all the lies away. All my defenses, all my pretenses, let me walk in the light of day. Give me the belt of truth. Only your righteousness guarding my heart with faith as my shield against fiery darts. Your gospel of peace as the shoes for my feet. Oh Lord, make my love complete and strip all the lies away. All my defenses, all my pretenses, let me walk in the light of day. Give me the belt of truth. With your salvation protecting my head, your word the manna with which I am fed. Your word of life as my sword for the fight. Lord, help me to walk in light and strip all the lies away. All my defenses, all my pretenses, let me walk in the light of day. Give me the belt of truth. So, he said, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. 
I was thinking of that shield of faith, and I'd gone through to make that song have pictures to go with it. I was looking for all kinds of pictures of Roman armor, and so I was thinking about what's involved with Roman armor. And as I was doing that, I thought about this Roman formation. So this is called the testudo, or the tortoise. And some of you may know this, or some of you may not, but when the Romans were advancing on a city, and it's when you're advancing on a city that people are firing flaming arrows at you, right? It's not out in the open battlefield when you need a slightly different formation. But if you're trying to go against the walls of the enemy, and hey, we're supposed to advance against the strongholds of the enemy, against the gates of hell. So when we're doing that, the Roman soldiers found they couldn't just be protecting themselves. You don't do it like this. You do it by being together with all these people, and those shields are covering the whole group of people. So I think that's part of what Paul is saying when he says, with this in mind, keep praying for each other. We need to be covering each other with our faith and with our prayers. Because alone, it's not going to work. <laughs> Let's read this together. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. The thing that really struck me is we're part of a team. That's how God created us to work. We're not lone rangers. Paul was not a lone ranger. Now, when he writes this letter, he's in prison, right? So I think he's kind of alone. Pray also for me. He knows he needs the prayers of the people. He can't do what he needs to do if he's all by himself. Pray for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should, as I ought to. So a couple of things struck me, but one of the things, I'm not sure which I'd, yeah. Okay, so one of the things that struck me is this phrase, ambassador for Christ. I'm an ambassador in chains. But we are all called to be ambassadors. We are people telling others or acting out for others, hey, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And trying to bring God's kingdom, what do we pray? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's being an ambassador for Jesus. Read this several, this, there's a bunch of verses here. Let's try and read it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So that's all of you guys, right? If you have accepted Jesus, 
then you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's not just Paul and the apostles. That's each one of us. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. That's that's a message we all know, that God in Christ was bringing people to himself, right? It's not something strange that we've never heard before. It's not something super technical and you need to go to seminary. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And that's meant to be our message. Sometimes you'll have a chance to preach that in words. Like, I don't know who it was. Was it St. Francis who said, preach the gospel, if necessary, use words? But... Okay, here's the last part of this. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So that's our message, right? And that's the message that's meant to be the message of our entire life. Whether we are saying it in words or just trying to live it out. Going back to what Paul said, pray for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, I sometimes when I am studying, a word will jump out. So fearlessly jumped out. I said, is he afraid? I don't think Paul very much was afraid, though he had reason to be. He was in jail. Eventually, the Romans were going to put him to death. But I checked on this word, and really boldly is, I think, a better translation. So God helped me to speak boldly with confidence the way I should be speaking. And this other thing that really jumped out at me is this concept of the mystery of the gospel. Now, where Paul was, actually in the whole Middle Eastern region at this time, there were a lot of what they call mystery religions. And the deal with a mystery religion is people are saying, hey, come on in. We have a special secret to let you know. When you're all the way in, we'll let you in on a special secret about God. But what Paul was saying is there's this amazing truth that God didn't really make clear until Jesus came and died on the cross and rose from the dead again. But now, it's fully public. It was a secret, but it's not a secret anymore. And Paul uses the word mystery a lot. I think it was, I think it was a special word for Paul, but maybe it was a special word in the region because they, were, they did have these religions that were mystery religions. But Paul is using mystery differently. And in the book of Ephesians, he uses it in two specific ways. He uses it to talk about 
the mystery that the Gentiles and the Jews have all been brought together, that the Jews have been grafted into Christ. But he also uses the word mystery when he's talking about marriage to talk about the fact that each marriage is a picture of Christ and the church. And he says that's a mystery. I think that when Paul says the mystery of the gospel, he's talking about the whole message of our reconciliation to God. And when he was writing to Timothy, he, he used this word mystery and then he summed it all up in one neat little package. I'm going to read this one, but the next slide, let's all read together. Beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is great. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in glory. So that's pretty much the message of what happened to Jesus and what it does for us. It brings us to God. So then Paul does have some sort of business aspects. Am I back on the screen? <laughs> he has some business aspects of what he's saying, because this is a letter, right? Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. We don't know very much about Tychicus. Paul sent him around to do some other things. He sent him to collect some money. He did other things, but I think this is another aspect of the fact that Paul is working as part of a team. He is not just out there. There are people that he can send off to do things for him. I'm sending him to you for this very purpose so that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. And we've talked about the fact when we began this study of Ephesians, we talked about the fact that probably this letter was sent to a lot of churches. And I suspect that Tychicus was sent with the letter to different places. Okay, so that all of the places could know how Paul was doing. Sometimes scholars say, oh, this wasn't written by Paul. It was just written by somebody who wanted to sound like Paul. But the thing for me is, wait a minute, he's talking about who he's sending along with this letter. That doesn't make sense to me if it's, not, if it's just about Paul or in the style of Paul. And then... He says, peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you who are picky about the words, some people get upset that some translations say brothers and sisters. I would like to tell you, yes, it's one word in the Greek. It's Adelphoi. But... That word means both brothers and sisters. Brothers, you can't say brother of a little girl. You can say Adelphoi of girls. And so that's why some translations, and I stick up here on the screen, a translation that says brothers and sisters, because Paul did want to include 
the girls in the church, not just in a general sense like he and men draws people in, but a, that word, Adelphoi, means brothers and sisters. It includes both. Anyhow, uh, grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. And I thought about this undying love thing, and I thought, is he really saying that if your love is going to give up, then forget it, we're not sending you grace? <laughs> and the thing that struck me is that our love comes from Christ. So the lo love we have is an undying love for that reason. Because it's not coming just from us. It's coming from God. So, let me go back. There we go. Peace to the brothers and sisters. Peace, love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an acknowledgement that that love is not going to die. It's not going to let us down. And because it's flowing through us, it's not ultimately going to let God down. I thought I would... Uh, Gary's going to come up and do communion because I thought that this would be a good time to renew the fact that we have a ministry of reconciliation, that God in Christ reconciled us to him, and that that's what communion is all about. But also that God has commissioned us each to be an ambassador for him. So Lord Jesus, I pray that we would have peace, that we would have your love, that we would have your grace. And it's all because of what you did on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.